<laughs> barely even has a job. I'm not sure if the, the ink is dry on yeah. the contract or if he's even finished signing. Well, it's like, welcome to machine, baby. It's welcome to the world now. Uh, you know, my favorite comedians of all time are dangerous. I like when a comic's dangerous. Like, you don't know what's going to come out of their mouth. Richard Pryor was dangerous. George Carlin was dangerous. This guy looks like an underwear model. He needs an edge. Uh, I'm happy to, you know, did some, did some, uh, something that's a little edgy and crazy. Uh, I don't think the jokes were particularly that funny. Uh, some of them were kind of old jokes. Me and John were talking about it. I know some of those in junior high school, some of those punchlines. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. Like, if, if you think if it was funny, remember the whole thing that happened with E? Right. Sometimes it's who says it, right? Sure. Because if Joan Rivers said something, yeah. everyone would laugh and go, oh, that's just Joan Rivers. But yeah. if Juliana Rancic says it, even yeah. though it's written for her, there's an outrage. Don Rickles is like that, too. He gets away with a lot of stuff. If you read it on paper, out of context, it looks like the most offensive thing yeah. ever. But, I mean, I officially uh, support Trevor Noah. Okay. I, I, I think he should, he should get the job and uh, he'll get out of this controversy and it'll be fine. But Do you think that this is, and maybe it's social media driven, I find now that, John, that people are outraged for just the sake of being outraged. Well, you're right. Our national addiction is umbrage, and we can't get enough of it. And everyone out there loves to be offended, especially on social media. It's one of the few things that unite conservatives and progressives in our culture. We <laughs> love to be outraged. These jokes would not have been out as outrageous if someone, like Artie said, that we all knew had said it, if Howard had said it, if Carlin had said it. It would have been a punchline not as funny because we don't know Trevor Noah yet. Mm -hmm. uh, people are willing to judge his entire career and everything he's ever done based on a few old jokes. And if that's the case, every comedian should get the chair. You know a couple of folks over at Comedy Central. Why, and some inside info, I'm sure, why did they choose a relative un unknown for this fra flagship franchise? Well, I, I, I can't actually say why he was chosen. He's a very funny guy, and I wish him well on the show. But I do think a lot of folks don't realize the kind of grind it takes to do a 10-hour-a-day show. You get a national headliner, someone like a Chris Rock, who'd be great in that role, but Chris Rock's making movies, he's not going to go give 12 hours a day to it. A lot of us would have loved to see, I would have loved to see Lewis Black get it, but I'm very happy for this guy, and I know that this thing is going to be forgotten, because just like we love the outrage, we also have the attention span of the guy from Memento, and we'll be on to our next faux outrage. <laughs> I just think it's so interesting, yeah, <laughs> faux outrage. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's amazing, because sometimes you will um, say something about someone or to someone, and they're not offended, but then you have this old machine. That was so That's offended. why it's so hard to offend comedians. Well, everybody, <laughs> everybody has a community. There, every, yeah. There's all these communities now. Jamie Foxx <laughs> just got in trouble with the transoperative That's community, and where, where are these communities pop? I mean, the last community you can make fun of are fat guys. Uh, and there's no one gets offended at that. Like every, Oh, a guy, I think some Muslims might disagree <laughs> with that. There's a, <laughs> there's a guy who calls me obese Witherspoon on, right. on, you know, on, on Twitter. And, uh, you know, he gets a bunch of laughs. What, should I get the fat community together to yeah. protest this guy? No, because I'm not offended. I don't care. I got better stuff to do. Do you think what Jamie Foxx said was offensive? I Honestly, I laughed at the yeah, joke, and yeah, I had I mean, trans friends. Listen, we're it. comics. Right. The guy who won the decathlon in 1976 is becoming abroad. If we can't... And he's a hero. And he's a hero. <laughs> Bruce Jenner yeah. doing that is now a hero. And there's trans kids that won't commit suicide because they see Bruce Jenner doing it because he's known to these kids from being on a horrible reality show where he's abused by Kardashians. It's a story of survival. Yeah. In the case of Jamie Foxx, he wasn't putting down trans people. He was making jokes about a celebrity. And if a, you want to be offended by that, it's very easy to. In, yeah, a, weird, in a weird way that, that, I mean, maybe in time that'll normalize it because then everyone is fair game. You, you, right. I mean, once, Bruce Jenner once it does made you ever hang out with transgender people? They make fun of each other all the time. <laughs> I hung out with a transgender person on, on Saturday night. You and me both. Yeah, so there you go. Bruce Jenner made no, I'm serious, I did. Bruce Jenner made it a spectacle by selling it to a TV network. Yeah. He's not trying exactly. to do it on the down low. He's like, look, I'm I'm trying to make money off of this. And that's not a 400-pound gorilla in the room. That's a gorilla Jamie on fire. Jamie Foxx wasn't being mean to Bruce Jenner. He's yeah, making jokes okay. about a celebrity. If a comic's not allowed to comment yeah. on that story, then what are we even doing this for? Okay. We're going to just keep making jokes about airports? I mean, you know, it's... All right, let's get back to Trevor. <laughs> We've gone off to Jamie Foxx <laughs> and, and all that. I want to go to, he was on your show, uh, and let's watch, let's watch. Here's a clip of him on your show. Some of the classiest racism I ever came across in America was in Lexington, Kentucky. Okay. That was, it was, it was beautiful racism. <laughs> charming, no, it was charming racism. Was, well, they, they perfected it down there. They, they, they have, said yeah. the most amazing things, they just, you know? <laughs> That's it, the, the Ku Klux Klan are in silk contour sheets. <laughs> They're very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's talking race here. <laughs> and and right. should people, be, what did he say, in Arkansas? Yeah, should he's, they he's, be having, he's making Kentucky, fun of, Kentucky. yeah, he's making fun of, the, you know, racism in Kentucky. He's, he's talking about a fact. 
uh, you know, that's what comics do. You bring up controversial stuff a lot of the times. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of us get bored with the typical subjects mm -hmm. that we're expected to talk it's about. It's not the comedian's job to choose material that's going to make the audience comfortable, especially a political with me. I beg the producers to give me a little bit more time, so this is a lightning round. Wendy, you're getting beat up on, so who gets to decide? It's okay. I think the people who are affected by stereotypes are the people who get to decide how they feel about that. Someone else, someone white telling me that I shouldn't be offended by these jokes because other black comedians have done it doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. If other black comedians want to make jokes about black people, that's okay. the right to do that. I don't have to think it's funny. Don. Wendy, you're beautiful and articulate. It's a pleasure to almost meet you virtually. Uh, I, I think in an era when we see black men disproportionately thrown into the prison system in the poverty to prison pipeline we have in this country where the Confederate flag, the symbol of quitting America because you want to keep people as livestock, still flies above the South Carolina Capitol. Being offended by an artist's jokes might not be the best channeling of your energies. And I it's say that with respect jokes. and admiration. It is about the message that it perpetuates. I encourage you to watch the jokes. entire special he did. You'll see he's making fun of himself throughout it. Yeah. We've got 30 seconds. It started it. I think the funniest thing, on his first uh, the most offensive thing said here tonight is that Jay Thomas is a journalist. I agree completely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I also Where'd believe you put that on the resume? This, was a, this was a decision to try and get people internationally involved in The Daily Show. I think that's the biggest mistake they're making. That could be they nice. want it to be some international kind of a thing. Yeah. And, it's you know, working. Nobody right, guys. minded those jokes in South Africa. That's, that's it. Working. Natalie, sorry we didn't get you in, but thank you, everyone. We'll have you back.